one of my compost heaps is just kind of sitting there. It's not doing anything and it needs reviving and needs kind of kickstarting to get it going again. So I've got a few things here. I've got a secret uh, ingredient behind that thing in a black cloth there. I've got a few greens and a few browns and I'm taking along a spade and a fork. When we get down to the compost, there's really four things that are gonna make that compost work. That's greens, browns, air and water. I'm gonna dig it out and have a look at it. Even before I've removed a single bit of compost, I think this is too dry. I mean, you look at all of this, this all looks way too dry. I mean, it could be that the outside has just sort of dried off and the rest of it's sort of moist in the middle, but I doubt it. I mean, this is, you know, should be nice um, wet grass. This is as dry as anything. So at this stage, this is not gonna be composting. I'm about halfway down now and I've just come across an area that's really compacted and it kind of smells a bit like rotten eggs. I'll show you what it looks like. So uh, it's actually quite hard to get in because it's just like a solid lump. And this is, this is sort of black, wet. That is gonna break down, but it's not what I'm looking for for good quality compost. So ideally I want this to be mixed in with some of that brown, drier brown material, give it a bit of air space and hopefully the air will get to it. So I'm gonna dig all that out and pile it up with this. That stinks, that's disgusting. There, this is the worst compost pile I've ever made. I've made loads of them, but this has all gone wrong. It's got that real rotten egg, stinky smell to it. It's all really compacted and wet. I'm gonna let it dry out a bit overnight and then tackle it in the morning. I made that compost pile in the spring and so I was putting in lots of grass clippings, lots of coffee grounds and lots of green leafy vegetables out of the veggie patch. The problem was I wasn't adding much in the way of browns and I should have been. What I should have done I suppose is save stuff like save leaves from autumn, leave them in a pile and then layer them up. The problem is where I live here, we're on the edge of the subtropics. Most of the native fauna doesn't, it's, it's all evergreen and it sort of looks the same year round and we don't really get much leaf fall. And that's why I've got a problem. This sort of stuff supplies carbon, but it's not just about the nutrients that this supplies. It also creates aeration because it's this tough, fibrous, woody stuff that would allow oxygen in it, kind of like aerates the compost and that's what I was missing out on. So I'm gonna gather some of this up and put it on the pile. I'm gonna use the lawnmower to break this down a bit. Just having this in smaller pieces means there's more surface area and that will allow the microbes to get at it a bit better. All right, that's looking, this is looking really good. That's gonna do the job. It's amazing how wet the bottom part of this pile is. Um, if I just, there's still a bit of a smell to it. It's really wet and what you can really see, um, you know, the kind of consistency of that is just so different from like normal compost. Even though you might have dampness in it, it just holds water in a different way. That's sort of glistening and shiny. It's like a sort of cake mix or something. Whereas the compost that I make over there, it's kind of like light and fluffy and it's still got moisture in it, but it's not gluggy and damp. This is my good compost pile and I'll show you this just so you can see the difference. So this is composted really well. Um, you know, there is a dampness to this. It's got, you know, you can feel the dampness on your hands, but it's not wet, it's not slimy. It's, I mean, it smells great. It smells like, I don't know, kind of like the forest floor. It's got an earthy smell to it. Um, it's just a completely different material. The difference between these two piles is the amount of oxygen in them. So this pile is essentially 
aerobic, there's oxygen in here and different sort of microbes live in that pile. This is anaerobic where there is no oxygen. So this stuff is still gonna break down, but there are disadvantages to it. One being you don't get as many nutrients as you do, or at least not beneficial nutrients for the garden. I mean, it's not like it's terrible, but it's not as good as this compost pile. The other thing about it is the temperature. So this at all times has been sitting at about air temperature. So the problem with that is, is it's not killing weed seeds. This gets up really high, only for sort of short periods of days, but it does get really high. Once it goes over 60 degrees, that's enough to kill off weed seeds. And I really don't want to be putting weed seeds on the garden. I've been going on the whole time about how there's not enough oxygen in here. And now I'm putting a back on here to stop some of the air getting in. And I know that looks a bit crazy, but the top of the pile was actually really dry. So I think the air has been coming through here. We get a lot of wind that comes up through here and that's what's dried the top out. The fact that the bottom's wet, the, the holes up here are not gonna make much of an effect. The reason it's wet is there's just too much greens. That's all it is. Now I'm gonna put everything back in, only this time I'm gonna layer it a bit like a lasagna and I'm gonna stack on the brown stuff from the wheelbarrow. All right, that's the compost pile full again. And now the secret ingredient. I'm gonna kickstart this pile with a bacteria bomb and I'm using this, which is a SCOBY from kombucha making. You don't have to use that. Obviously you could use like urine would work really well. That's got urea and lots of bacteria in it. You could also use any kind of manure. That's gonna be loaded with bacteria. SCOBY actually means symbiotic bacteria, yeast bacteria, something like that. So a bit, uh, I'm getting the words all wrong, but you get the meaning that, that this is basically bacteria. So I'm gonna dump this in. I think it's the actual liquid that's full of the bacteria, but you can see just looking at this, 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 is, this has gone wrong basically. So it was making uh, kombucha and has now sort of just gone into a horrible fermented mess. But I think it'll be stuffed with bacteria. So I'm gonna put the liquid in here. Ooh, check this thing out. Looks like a brain. It's like, ugh. It's really firm. It's like a, I don't know, like a fish or a piece of fat. It's really tough. I mean, it's like bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. I buried the scoby in there, but apparently uh, worms love it, but we'll see. So at the moment, the temperature is the same as air temperature because the pile's not doing anything, which is, what are we on, 20-ish, so, you know, around 70 Fahrenheit. And we want it to go up to 60, which is 140 Fahrenheit. So we'll come back in a few days and see what has happened. All right, it's about three days later. We've had loads of rain, which should have done the compost pile some good, actually. Let's uh, see where we're up to. I'm actually quite excited. Bet you are too, aren't you? On the edges, <laughs> on the edge of your seats, I'm sure. Ah, all right. Yeah, straight away that's going up pretty quick. It's already at 40, yeah, it's gonna hit 50. It's going up really fast. It's so exciting. That's up to 65 degrees, which is 150, something like that, 150 Fahrenheit. So that's pretty hot, that's good. That's gonna kill off any weed seeds, I'm happy with that. Quite a lot of work just to dig it all out, but it is worth it for me. That's a lot of compost, which is pretty useful. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.